Always a fun day when you get a new keyboard, and this one is pretty special. This is the Leopold FC660C, and this is the uh, electrostatic capacitive keyboard, the one which basically has the Topre switches in it. The other one, um, the uh, I think it's the M, that has the MX switches. So this is the one that I really wanted. I tried it out at uh, Tokyo keyboard meetups a few times in the past, and I really loved the way it feels but I cannot use a non-programmable keyboard. I took my Topre RealForce into work last week and I tried to use it because I really like the way it feels, but um, I couldn't use it because I was so used to having the backspace key in a different place and uh, other keys, I, I couldn't get used to it. And I think I watched Flerad's video where he compared this keyboard to the um, HHKB and I commented on that video that I wish they made this keyboard um, pr fully programmable, then I could have one. And it looks like our keyboard god Hasu is listening to our prayers, so he came up with this. So he already has a similar thing, which is for the HHKB, which makes it fully programmable. And he's recently come up with this one, which makes the FC660C fully programmable. So that's an important uh, point. This uh, will not work with um, the regular Cherry uh, version. This is only for uh, the C variant, uh, so that's kind of an important thing. Um, so yeah, it's a drop-in replacement, so you don't have to do any soldering at all. You just put the ribbon cable in the back here and screw it in, and you know, put the other one uh, in a drawer somewhere. So excellent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get this open and see what we've got because this is actually brand new to me. I haven't I haven't taken any sneak peeks. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone for the ivory and grey version, uh, just to be a bit different. I, I have uh, I already have a, a black one. I thought this would look nice on my desk. Here we go. It's a really small, small thing. Let me get rid of some of this junk. Okay, and there is the keyboard itself. So it's pretty. It's a pretty distinctive layout. Um, of course, it's. Uh, it's a 60% kind of style, but it has your arrow keys here, and then it has function keys here. Now, as standard, these are insert and delete. Kind of strange, you, you would think that it would be page up, page down, but these are insert and delete, but that's all that's irrelevant to me now. I can make this be enter and, and spacebar if I wanted it to, um, now that I have the, the controller to make it fully programmable. But yeah, um, it feels just as good as I remember it feeling when I tried it out at different events and I'm really excited to uh, to get this opened and get this new logic board in and so let's see how that goes. So of course doing this voids the warranty. Oh, we don't care about that because we're going to a better place. So the next step is unscrewing this screw, and uh, I have just the tool for the job. It's called a screwdriver. I haven't looked at any guides on how I should be doing this. Uh, you know, I could cut and go and find one, but I'm guessing unscrewing this screw is. Uh, but I'm guessing unscrewing this screw is an integral part of the whole process. So as you can see, I've used some credit cards to pry open the case. I don't have fancy tools, so I had to use a few credit cards. It wasn't that it wasn't that difficult, but it was a bit nerve wracking. I was worried about cracking the the, uh, the plastic. But if you manage to slide a, uh, a card up through to the corners of the case uh, on one side, once you slide one through to the other side, the the case should kind of like pop up, and uh, yeah, it just popped up at the back. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with the front of the case. You can see that the front has actually come up by itself. I haven't really done much. I've just wedged one card into uh, the, just off, off the center of the, the front of the case. And it seems to be coming up uh, by itself now. So I'm going to carry on with this and see if I can get the, uh, the front off. So I managed to get the, uh, the front of the case off. And what I had to do was um, I put a screwdriver on the corner parts, the tabs that hold in the corners to give myself a bit more leverage. The credit cards weren't really working, um, but I managed to do it with no damage. So I think that's probably the way to go. 
is to on the the side that you do last it's just gently very gently is to put um, a screwdriver and try and kind of wiggle it in there on one side to get a little bit and then go to the other side and then wiggle the screwdriver into the other corner and get that up and then when you've got your hand on the other side of the board you should be pushing up on the on the keys to separate the uh, the outer case from from the main part of the board I think that's probably the the way to go so here's the board uh, the right way up and I've just been able to lift off this outer outer case put that aside carefully and then here is the keyboard itself and this just lifts right off this lifts right off so you see the controller is there uh, the controller is there and that's the part that we need to replace so we need to get access to the controller and unscrew it and then we'll be good to go so if I rest the, the board on the front here uh, I can see the screws are accessible there right and that's the board that we're going to replace so let me get in there with my screwdriver and uh, we'll take this out and then we can press on And there we are. So we take the bottom part, put that aside, and here is the controller. So let's turn the board around and see how we're going to get this out. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the stock controller and uh, compare it with the Hasu replacement. Well, straight away you can see that the uh, the stock controller is way more complex. It's got loads more stuff on it. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that I know what all this stuff does, but you can see it has a lot more capacitors on there. Um, yeah, the, the Hasso one is 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 much much simpler. Yeah, it's funny. Um, so you can see the the dip switches on the stock one have been replaced just by a reset switch because of course you do all the um, the customization of the layout in the, in the uh, firmware that you now have access to yourself so the dip switches aren't really needed. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try and get the, uh, the ribbon cable out from this part of the board. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get the, uh, the ribbon cable out. Um, I'm gonna use a flat screwdriver and great care to get this out with. So with the stock controller out, I'm going to try and put the new controller in and hopefully this just uh, presses in here. I can't keep my hands out of the way of the camera, I'm afraid. Okay, and that's gone in a treat. So now it's just a question of getting everything back in. Hopefully, uh, the way it went in, you can see that they've had to uh, bend the ribbons over and squash them over a bit, so that should be no problem, and it should just sit down here, flip it over, and try and line it up with the, the holes on the bottom side of the case. So that's the replacement controller screwed back in, and now I'm going to gently put the board back where it's supposed to be. Check that everything's lined up properly. It looks like it is, so I can focus a bit better there. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really holding that in there. It's 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 such a nice, tight fit there. And I'm going to go and get the other parts of the board and get it back together. So now it's time to push the case onto the base. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to just try and gently ease it down. turn it over see what's going on on the back so those bits there gonna have to be squashed quite a lot I think uh, snaps in there it's a good snap and the last corner is in right 
So let's see how well this fits together because the reason I got this early is because it's a Rev B board and Hasu wants to make a few alterations to it. I think the, the first um, revision that he did, he said that the USB port didn't quite line up properly. This one looks to be fine. Um, the other thing he said that in, in the next revision, he's going to move the um, reset button over to the left of it. So let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Yeah, so you can see that the, uh, the reset switch should, uh, well, it could probably be in a bit more comfortable position, shifted over to the left a bit. And if you buy one of these boards in the future, then you'll probably see that change reflected in the Rev C and beyond. Okay, I'm going to get this, uh, this warranty sticker back on just for the sake of completeness and the screw that goes inside it, obviously. And then we'll see about programming this thing. So to make this into the awesome board that it can be, you're going to need to program the firmware. That means, you know, writing your layouts and telling the firmware what you want the keys to do. And then you're going to have to flash the firmware to the board. So the easiest way to do that is using the key map editor that Hasu himself made, and it looks like this. So when you load up the page, um, I found that it recognized my keyboard and this came up automatically, so that, that's really nice. Um, then you can see here, this is how it looks, and there are no other layers programmed into it. Um, so it's really basic when it starts off, so you're gonna have to do some of the work yourself to make it um, an, an excellently programmed board. It's pretty easy to use. Um, if I click on this key here, caps lock, uh, do you really need this? No, I don't need it. So I'm going to click on caps lock and I usually have caps lock set to backspace. So I've changed the function of that key from being caps lock key to being a backspace key. Now what do I do with my backspace key? I usually have that set as tab. Um, so those are the kind of, that's what you can do. And the other cool thing you can do is to have the shift key um, function as a, a kind of a, a tap key. So uh, let's see, I'm going to do it from here. So if I find the one that says one shot, that means that when I, I can just tap the shift key and then I press the A key and it will be a capital A and then I can carry on typing and there'll be lowercase letters. It means that I don't need to hold the shift key and press A at the same time. I just tap it and then move on. So I can select action mods one shot and then have it be functioning on the left shift key and then apply that. And that becomes a one shot left shift key. If I hold the, sh the shift key down, it will function as normal. Next, I wanna set up my function key. I'm gonna change this key out here so I'm going to click on it here and then make it be a, where are we? To be the momentary switch to switch to layer one. And then I moved myself to layer one and I want all of these keys here to be the F keys. So I'm going to put those in now. So I'm going to work on my layout and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so as you can see, I've got backspace here, left control up here, and the one shot keys on both shifts. And then I've got my L1 change here, and layer one has got my function keys going across here. And when I'm in Japanese mode, I will have this key just come up as a Japanese yen sign. And I've changed these to be page up, page down, home, and end. Switch back to layer zero, and I've changed these keys to move um, to the next tab or the previous tab when I'm browsing. So that's how I've got mine set up. The next thing you'll do once you've got everything set up is uh, you'll download the firmware. Once you've downloaded it, you're gonna use Flip to, to program it. When Flip opens, you need to select USB and then you're gonna open the connection to USB. If you click it like that, it will say it can't open. So you are gonna need to flip over your board, no pun intended, to put it into bootloader mode. So I've just pressed the button on the back of the board and I'll click it again. And now the, the flip uh, application can talk to my keyboard. Next, you're gonna load the firmware that you want to uh, flash to your board. And you click on that one to load the hex file. Okay, so I've loaded the hex file now and you can see it comes up here. I've named it FC660C and then that's the hex file. So that's my layout and the firmware uh, 
stuff and stuff that goes with it. Um, and then all you do is you're gonna click run. And there you go, it's done. So everything is done. Um, so to get out of the bootloader mode, what I do is I just unplug and, and replug the keyboard. So I'll do that now. So that's everything. Um, so obviously you can't see this, but uh, now I'm pressing my, my keys to, to toggle between tabs, uh, to, to shift up and down between the tabs. And then uh, my backspace key is now in a bit more convenient place for me and everything is hunky-dory. So I'm gonna come back with another video talking to more about the keyboard and what I think about it, because this isn't really a review, this is just a, here's what I did with my keyboard kind of thing. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about this, then please ask me. I'm not saying that I'll be able to answer all of them, but uh, questions are always good. See you next time, bye bye.